I am 160 centimeters or 5 foot 3, so petite, and I have 10 style secrets I want to share for petite women to look taller and more balanced in their clothing. But the main reason I want to film today's video is because I've been given so much advice over the years on how petite women should dress, and a lot of time I find this advice either outdated or too rigid. So I feel like petite women, myself included, look our best when we're able to do two things. Firstly, accommodate our height so the clothing looks proportionate and balanced on us. The second thing is to dress in a way that still expresses our personal style so that our own beauty and our own kind of style can shine through. The point of going through all of these tips is to understand it and train our eye to see why sometimes an outfit feels just right and why sometimes a combination might feel slightly off. So eventually, we don't have to think about these petite style rules at all. Today's video is in partnership with Petite Studios, a clothing brand that makes it so easy for petite women. The clothing is cut with a petite body shape in mind, so everything just fits and cuts off at the right place. The very first style tip is all about elongation and how to create a longer vertical line, which is basically the thing that we struggle with um, as petite women. So the obvious answer is that we create elongation by not having any visual breaks in our outfit and going for pieces like a cream dress, where from head to toe, it's very long without breaks. Or we can do something like a longer coat, which is a personal favorite in my wardrobe, where it goes below the knee and which is creating more length in the clothing we're choosing. Long line pieces are some of my favorite items to wear and I was really bummed out for years because I just felt like because I was short, I can't wear these pieces. And I do feel like that is untrue. Petite women can wear long things to create more of that visual length in an outfit. But I also want to address the fact that if we have an outfit where we are only wearing long things, then the outfit can get very unflattering very quickly. When we love an item of clothing, in my case long line pieces, it's not about wearing all long line, but wearing your favorite long line piece with some other silhouettes that can create balance. So for example, with the white dress, I might put a shorter jacket on top to balance the silhouette. But another reason, and I think this applies to all types of dressing, not just petite dressing, is that by wearing the shorter pieces with the long piece, it actually highlights the long piece instead of having other pieces compete with it. Remember what I was saying about keeping our style while accommodating our height? This is the perfect example because I love creating interesting outfits that play with silhouettes. If I'm just wearing short pieces, it's much harder to do that, whereas this still allows me to express my style and play with those proportions in a look. If you don't have any long silhouettes in your wardrobe, I would say definitely go try this on, have a little experiment and see how you like it, but I wouldn't just disregard it because I think it can work. My second style tip is about creating harmony and wearing the clothing that will look the most natural on a petite person. This tip here is in clear contrast to my last one about long line pieces, but I think it's really important to understand this one as well. This one is based off the Kibi body typing system, where if I'm just gonna oversimplify it because we don't have time to get into all the detail, is to wear clothing that mimics our bone structure. So if you fall into one of the more petite types, for example, romantic, or gamine, the recommendation is that you stay away from really long vertical lines and instead you wear shorter, more cropped, slightly more rounded pieces. That is, as opposed to long, structured, and maybe more angular. What I've learned and what I've taken away from this system is how to create harmony and understand why certain silhouettes feel natural and why certain silhouettes don't. When we're talking about shorter silhouettes and creating more harmony in an outfit, these are some outfit examples. So we can wear a cropped jacket here with some shorter shorts and we've also got a knit that is tucked in so it becomes more cropped. All these pieces are shorter and since I'm short, I do think that they fit in a very harmonious way on. And also in a jacket and jeans outfit, my jeans are more cropped so they're slightly shorter, the jacket again shorter, so this is also another way to wear shorter pieces in an outfit. It doesn't have to be you know, just skirts and shorts, even with pants, if you go a little bit shorter, I think it still fits with this rule. What I've taken away from this tip is really to wear these shorter pieces and to combine it with what we talked about before, 
the long line pieces. And I truly feel like this creates the most harmony, but also interest in an outfit. And I think they can definitely work together to help petite women dress well, but also continue to be creative and experiment with what they're wearing. Have those crop silhouettes on the inside and maybe pair that with a longer coat. Maybe wear some long pants with a crop jacket and a crop top, but mix up these silhouettes in an outfit and you will get really interesting outfits that allows you to express whatever you're feeling that day, but still look balanced and proportionate. I wanna take a moment here and talk about some of the really lovely Petite Studios pieces I'm wearing. So with this camel coat, this one is made from 80% wool, so it feels really luxurious. With this one, I'm wearing the extra small. I think that the sleeves fit me perfect. The length of the coat is also really good. Some coats, as much as I love a long coat, can hit very, very long, whereas this one still feels fairly balanced. And I think most petite heights will be able to pull this off. This next jacket you just saw me style and this one is made from 70% wool. This jacket is a crop jacket and you guys will know if a lot of the jackets, like I'm thinking about that totem scarf jacket um, and jackets like that, they sit so, so long. And I like that this one is a little bit shorter. The best thing about this jacket is that it is reversible. See that there is a Petit Studios tag here. I'm going to unpick it. And once I unpick it, you can wear it both with this camel color on the outside but you can also wear it with the cream color on the outside as well. And I think that is just really, really, really versatile for this jacket. I feel like pants are probably the thing that petite women struggle to shop for the most because almost all pants need to be shortened. I think that tailoring is 100% worth it, so easy to do, but it's just sometimes nice when you can get a pant, put it on and it fits just right. These are the rain pants. I'm 5'3", so you can see how it hits on me and it hits just right for winter boots. These pants are very warm, so definitely something for autumn winter, but I do feel like the shape and fit is really lovely on someone with more petite height. For these pants, when you look up close at the fabric, there is a lot of depth to the color, especially with the brown one. I think it looks really, really beautiful with some purple flecks to the fabric that just gives it a lot more depth and makes it look a lot more luxe than if it was just one flat color all the way through. I'm wearing these in a size small. I would say in between sizes and I sized up and this one fits perfect. There are two other pieces I own from them and one of them is this denim shirt. There are three colors of buttons that kind of run down the shirt and it's just such a playful, fun touch to a more traditional denim shirt. And then the final piece, which I've already shown in the video, is this color block sweater. So this is a merino wool cotton sweater um, and it's in black and white. It's a really fun, playful piece with this cool asymmetrical design on the neckline. You can see that on the sleeves, it fits me just right, as opposed to having these really dangly long sleeves which can often happen when a sleeve is not cuffed in. Petite Studios is currently doing their 30% off for Black Friday, so I will link to all of these pieces down below. And for a lot of these pieces, it also comes in different colorways. So I'll link to those as well down below. We've been talking about a few tips that I feel like are more about the bigger things like proportion, silhouettes. Let's talk about something really simple. For petite women, make sure your bag hits you at the right length. So what happens like with clothing, for bags, the shortest adjustment is often too long for petite women. So with the bag, it will often sit kind of almost like on the leg, far below the waist, below the hip, it's, it's on the leg. And what it does is that it almost like shortens the leg, draws the eye down, and I don't feel like it's doing anything for an outfit or for a petite person's height. For crossbody bags, my preference is actually to have it a little bit higher than my hip. I think that this makes my torso a bit shorter, my legs longer, and it also just defines that waist area. I usually wanna have some waist definition, and when the bag just crosses over at my waist, I really like the way that looks. I also really like top handle bags with a very short strap or like a 90s shoulder bag because these are shorter silhouettes that I think look very balanced on a petite person. So with handbag size, I always like a mini or small handbag. And these are my everyday bags. I will also have a top handle tote bag that carries my larger equipment. This is something I do almost every day, so I'm always able to wear that smaller bag. Um, and I think it's better for my shoulders and for my back as well to divide the weight. So the thing key is small bags will just look like regular bags. Regular bags will look like big bags. Oversized bags are a no-no because they will just look huge. So unless it's an absolute essential, I personally don't really do it. One of the major trends for fall winter this year are blazers and jackets with more angular shoulders and maybe also angular lapels. So something I've noticed for petite women, especially if you look into the kibby body typing system, 
is that often time, not always, not always, often time, a lot of petite women fall into categories that are more rounded. So what that means is that those angular shapes can sometimes be hard to pull off. Whether this tip applies to you depends on your features. You need to look at your own structure and especially your face, I think your shoulders, and decide for yourself whether they are very angular. If they are, then you might actually look really good in the angular shapes. But for a lot of petite women, they tend to be a bit more soft, a um, bit more rounded in their structure and that will look better in those rounded shapes as opposed to a lot of very harsh angles. This video is about breaking the rules, wearing what we want. So I do have angular pieces in my wardrobe, but I wouldn't pair all of them together. I would instead do one angular piece and then mix it in with some softer items. Here, I've just changed out the bag from that very, very rectangular bag to a slightly softer, rounder shape. And already, I think that does something to make the outfit better. Would I technically look better in a blazer less angular? Definitely, but it can be done just by changing up some other pieces. We're gonna move into some more specific tips now and these are about how to choose clothing for petite women and things to look out for. The style of the silhouettes that I like to wear and I recommend looking for. A lot of slightly outdated recommendations will point us to things that maybe cling to the body or shorter skirts, heels, and I think this is really not my vibe. What I like is a more modern look. So what I like to go for for the majority of my wardrobe are relaxed fits. These are things that have a bit of room to them, but they don't go into oversized territory and they also are not super clingy and tight because that's just not appropriate at all for my lifestyle. The great thing is that you can also pair them together and your outfit isn't too loose and you don't get lost in the outfit either. Especially if you add a belt, have some waist definition, the outfit feels balanced even if you wear relaxed pieces from head to toe. So this is where I feel like I build the foundation of my wardrobe in this category. Of course, you can have silhouettes that are not relaxed fit, so wider, more slim, but this is a really good foundation for your wardrobe. I wanna talk about heat length and definition. Even if something doesn't fit well, or it's more loose, roomy, oversized, if the sleeve and the pant length fits well or fits perfect, it will make the outfit so much better. The best piece to highlight this is in really wide leg pants or in tailored blazers. Even if it looks very oversized and dramatic on, if the sleeve fits, it will make it so much better than if the sleeve doesn't. This is basic and yet it makes such a big difference. The other thing I pay a lot of attention to is the neckline and the cuff. So we talked about sleeve length, but something that I think looks really nice on the sleeve is when the sweater or shirt cuffs in. Or if it doesn't cuff in, you roll it up so it shows the wrist. Having definition on the wrist so that the sweater doesn't just like fall into the hand and you know finishes at a really like wide open shape just makes the outfit look like it was designed for your body and i think it makes a huge difference in being able to wear different shapes as a petite person but still making it look flattering on our shape when it comes to neckline definition here i find that i always look better and the clothes look like they were designed for me when the neck is a little bit smaller and has some definition whether that means a cuff or just a smaller shape it looks better like that if it's very open and very loose and it moves around a lot. Sometimes this can feel sloppy and make the clothes look like it's ill-fitting on my shoulders. Something really important for petite women when looking for new clothes is to look at the weight and the drape of a fabric. This one applies for all seasons, but especially in autumn winter when the fabrics can be quite bulky and heavy. If I wear two pieces in this mid to heavy weight material, I think there isn't enough contrast and it can look a bit unflattering. Or at least, I definitely don't look taller. Whereas if I reach for this pant, it's still a similar weight, but there is a lot more drape. It already just makes the outfit so much more flattering compared to before. And I can also show you a silk pant. This one is flowy, lighter, and it does look a lot better than the first one. This really depends on climate, but if possible, I would say most things that are very, very heavy in fabric don't look as good as something that is more midway or lightweight um, with drape because those heavier fabrics tend to look bulkier. Even for coats, Instead of finding something, you know, very, very, very thick, like this one, even the coat that I'm showing, I think is a lot better. And just having a little bit more drape and flowiness to it. And then with this coat, by the way, I've seen on people, it looks beautiful. I just know that if I were to put it on, maybe it's not the same. Going back to the very start, if you love this coat, you love the shape, it's just about finding this shape in a slightly different fabric 
and you'll still be able to wear something like this. Everything can be worn, just with maybe some slight alteration. Petite women generally look better in small details. So whether that means small prints or small pleats, small buttons, smaller details that still feel proportionate to our height. It's not so much about going ultra dainty, but the fact that these daintier ones just look normal on us. This can be applied to any detail on clothing, so in winter, if I think about cable knits, I feel like we generally can look better in maybe a daintier cable, like what I'm wearing, as opposed to really, really big cables. This applies to spring summer prints and florals. This also applies to details like collars, um, lapels, slightly smaller, might just feel a bit more harmonious. I think shape also really matters. With my earrings, I often go very, very big with my earrings. But because they're round, I find that it just feels right, even though it's challenging this idea. Whereas if I was to wear something long and it was big, then it would feel completely overwhelming as an accessory. With accessories here, I want to specifically talk about necklaces. I often like shorter necklaces because in my mind, they create the illusion where it brings the eye up. If necklaces are all very long, then I almost feel like it draws the eye down. So that's just something I like to think about. If I'm wearing long dresses, long coats, I like to keep my accessories quite high so that it's balancing those long pieces. There is really a lot of nuance in accessories, but these are some general things that I've noticed. When it comes to what shoes to look for, I actually feel like I base my shoes more heavily on my lifestyle than my height. Because I walk a lot, all my shoes just need to be comfortable, they need to be sturdier, which is why I can't wear those delicate little shoes um, that might look nice but just completely will not work for my lifestyle. I think that for petite women, the general recommendation is going for nude shoes so it elongates the leg. For spring summer, this works. For autumn winter, that's just not a stylistic choice that I like. So I kind of just ignore that for the most part. Something I do look for is maybe a slight almond shape or slight point. And I will not wear any shoe that squishes me in. It will have to be really slight and will have to be comfortable. What I do with my shoes is mostly styling. So something I like to do is to match my shoe color to my pant color. Or if it's not the exact same color, at least in depth. So if I've gone for a white top, gray bottoms, I'll do a black shoe so that it kind of continues the color palette of the outfit. This just looks really natural to me from a styling perspective, but it also just continues the line from pant to shoe. If I don't have the shoe to match the pants, sometimes it will break this rule. And I think it's completely okay this is something that I find helps, but it's not the only thing that will make an outfit more elongated. The only other shoe thing I recommend is a block heel. I feel like block heels are my best friend because a lot of them, especially if they're not too high, are still very comfortable for every day. I can do tons of walking in them, but it just gives me a little bit of lift and confidence when I'm wearing them. I have to shout out these bared footwear boots. These are boots I purchased maybe a year ago. They're pointed, but so comfortable. They're very wide. Your feet will not all be squashed. They will lay very, very flat. They're very wide shoes. And these are shoes that I find very ideal for winter dressing as a petite person. They elongate, they're comfortable. They just take all the boxes. I did buy these shoes myself. Um, just what I mentioned, because I know they work with a lot of influencers. Yeah, bought them myself. Love the shoes a lot. The final style secret I want to share is about color and how to use color for an outfit. The first one is that you can go tonal. So you're creating a lot of elongation because you're not using color to break up an outfit. See how you kind of look from head to toe and there are no visual breaks to the vertical line. The second way of dressing is to actually color block. When you're color blocking, you're clearly defining where the waist is, where the legs are, and I think by doing this, it can actually just create really good proportions as well in a petite person. These two ways of using color are achieving different things, but they both enhance a petite frame, which is what we're basically looking for. With color blocking, I would just pay attention and make sure that you're creating the proportion you want. So for me, this means having a top and having the new color start around the waist because this will elongate my leg as opposed to cutting me off halfway, which might be less flattering with color. I also want to bring it back to the very start and talk about the fact that petite dressing is only one aspect petite women should think about. There are also so many other things to consider, like what colors look good on us, what style we have, because I generally feel I look so much better in contrast outfits versus tonal. So the tonal outfits might make me look taller, but the high contrast looks tend to feel a bit more natural on me. I think when petite women place too much emphasis on looking taller, sometimes these other things can get lost and we don't fully highlight our beauty 
in the clothes we wear. That kind of brings me to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to go give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, go check out my channel for more videos like this and just for tons of style inspo from someone petite. I'm also on Instagram just sharing tons of outfits similar to what I do here on YouTube. Thank you so much for your time and for watching today's video. Thank you to Petite Studios for working with me in today's video. It was the perfect sponsor, I think, for the topic. Have a really good week and I'll see you next one. Bye.